the bulk of the U.S. military's East Coast base fleet all comes from this one part of Virginia. And today we saw dozens of ships all leaving, heading out to sea from this one area just to get out of the way of this storm. The U.S. Navy versus Hurricane Irene? That's one battle the military is not prepared to fight. The imminent arrival of the storm has virtually cleared out the world's largest naval base. The U.S. Navy ordered 27 ships to sea, including an aircraft carrier. It's important that they go early so that they're able to, to get ahead of the storm and stay outside of uh, the destructive winds. And... Look at what Irene has done to the Bahamas so far. It could overwhelm the Navy's pier since the low-lying Norfolk area is vulnerable to storm surge. And the winds could literally rip and pull a ship out to sea. It can get very dangerous to have uh, loose ships from piers uh, if they stay in port. The fleet is heading hundreds of miles east, so the storm will pass between the ships and the east coast of the U.S. CNN producer Larry Shaughnessy is on board one of those ships, and he called us from the deck of the USS Wasp. As the storm passes the Carolinas and Virginia, all these ships will start to turn inland and start heading up behind the storm. No one knows how bad the damage could be, which is why sailors and Marines are mainly concerned for their families and homes. One of the sailors that I spoke with said that he and his wife couldn't decide whether she should go to Knoxville, Tennessee, where her family is from, or stay with the children in Norfolk, about 10 miles from the ocean. Uh, the concern being that if she leaves, they won't know what happens to the house. Mm. Well, the Navy is already making some contingency plans in case these ships are going to be needed after the storm so that they could move to an area that, say, maybe would need help with a rescue or recovery mission. Uh, the Virginia National Guard has also put several hundred of its troops on alert. And the North Carolina National Guard has assembled some special teams with experts in things like communications, power generation and security all ready to help when this storm comes in. Joe? So they would certainly be among the first responders if there was a real serious problem on the East Coast. These would be the people presumably untouched and, and ready to dig in and, and lend some assistance. That's right. The one thing with the hurricane that you get, Joe, that you don't get in, say, like the earthquake we had just a couple of days ago, is you get warning. You have time to, to position some of these people, put people on alert, and you have time to get the resources and equipment together ahead of time, get it in a safe place, and then you can quickly get it out after the storm comes through. Chris Lawrence at the Pentagon, thanks so much for that.